Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan, coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis is sending Cardinal Matteo Zuppi to Moscow to foster dialogue and seek a peaceful solution to Russia's war in Ukraine. The Holy See Press Office announced that the President of the Italian Bishops' Conference will travel to the Russian capital as an envoy of Pope Francis. The two-day trip aims to support humanitarian gestures that can help to bring peace in war-torn Ukraine. The Cardinal will support Pope Francis's call for an end to the conflict in Ukraine. The Pope has been an outspoken proponent of peace, repeatedly urging world leaders to work towards resolving conflict peacefully. As of the 18th of June, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights had confirmed over 9,000 civilian deaths as a direct result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russian forces have carried out widespread and systematic torture of captured civilians since their invasion of Ukraine. On Tuesday, the United Nations Human Rights Office reported that dozens were summarily executed. The UN report reveals more than 900 instances of civilians, including children and the elderly, being arrested arbitrarily throughout the conflict by Russia. Matilda Bogner, who is the head of the UN Human Rights Office in Ukraine, said Russian forces mistreated and sexually assaulted civilians during their captivity. She said torture was used to force victims to cooperate with the occupying authorities or to intimidate those with pro-Ukrainian views. The report, which covers the 15 months from the beginning of the Russian invasion to May this year, also lists dozens of instances of arbitrary imprisonment of Ukrainian security personnel. A UK investigative report on the ongoing violence in India's northeastern state of Manipur reveals a clear religious dimension and says that Christians are living in constant fear in the state. The report was written by British journalist David Campanale and presented to the International Religious Freedom or Belief Alliance. The June 21st report examines the causes of the unrest that started on the 3rd of May which has resulted in the burning of hundreds of churches and driven tens of thousands of people from their homes. The study highlights that with access to Manipur restricted and the internet shut down, it is now impossible to draw definitive conclusions as to the scale of the violence or whether it was premeditated and coordinated. The report also says that the conflict cannot be explained by citing ethnic or economic disputes alone, as churches belonging to both the clashing tribal communities of Métis and Cookies were destroyed in the violence. All of Pope Francis's audiences, including those with specific groups and general audiences, will be temporarily halted throughout July for the summer break. They are scheduled to resume in August. The prefecture of the papal household informed this through a statement issued by the Holy See Press Office. The Wednesday general audiences will resume on the 9th of August, after the Holy Father returns from World Youth Day in Portugal. A group of more than 30 Catholic Democrats in the US House of Representatives signed a letter on the occasion of the anniversary of the US Supreme Court's Dobbs decision, which returned abortion laws to the states, reaffirming their support for abortion. In the lawmaker's statement, organised by Representative Rosa de Lauro and signed by former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, lamented the Supreme Court's 2022 decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in their statements opposing various pro-life legislation approved or discussed by state legislatures. The lawmakers argued that abortion bans and restrictions disproportionately hurt individuals who already experience poverty, prejudice and racism. Contrary to the statement of the lawmakers, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that human life must be respected and protected absolutely from the moment of conception. From the first moment of his existence, a human being must be recognised as having the rights of a person, among which is the inviolable right of every innocent being to life. Pope Francis has previously compared abortion to hiring a hitman. The Catholic Advocacy Network of the American state of Delaware is urging the faithful to oppose a proposal to legalise physician-assisted suicide in the state. The group said House Bill 140 would change the state's legal approach to medical ethics and healthcare decision-making, stating that its opposition is rooted in the Church's belief in the sanctity of life and the individual's dignity. They also recognised the efforts of the Catholic Church, faith groups and medical professionals in blocking the legislation from becoming law. The group is calling on people to urge their Senate representatives to oppose and vote against the bill. 
The United Nations claims over 1,000 people have been killed and thousands injured in attacks in Afghanistan since the Taliban took control of the country. In a report issued on Tuesday, the UN mission in Afghanistan said that 1,095 civilians were killed and 2,679 injured between the 15th of August in 2021 and May of this year. The UN report said over 700 people died as a result of improvised explosive devices, including in suicide attacks in marketplaces, schools and in mosques. Meanwhile, the UN Refugee Agency also warned on Tuesday that an earlier estimate that conflict in the African nation of Sudan would prompt one million people to flee across its borders is likely to be surpassed. The body's Assistant Secretary General, Ralph Mazu, said the situation in the Darfur region will see those numbers rise. The war between opposing military factions that began in the middle of April has caused nearly 600,000 people to escape into neighbouring countries including Egypt, Chad, South Sudan and the Central African Republic. Hundreds of parents gathered outside the Montgomery County Board of Education in the American state of Maryland, demanding the state's largest school district allow them to shield their children from books and lessons that contain homosexual characters. The parents argued that they should be allowed to keep their children out of lessons that go against their religious convictions. The Montgomery County Board of Schools announced attempts to integrate a reading list, including depictions of homosexuality, into its English language curriculum last year, despite numerous requests from parents for a policy allowing parents to opt their children out. The school board insisted that students should interact with such materials. The board's policy to introduce these books is slated to be implemented during the 2023 to 2024 academic year. North Carolina's Republican-controlled General Assembly has finalized revisions to upcoming abortion restrictions that would block pending litigation, seeking to stop the law's enforcement. The House agreed to the changes made in the Senate, described as clarifying and technical changes, to a law approved last month, which will ban most abortions after 12 weeks of pregnancy. The 12-week ban, with new exceptions for rape, incest and life-limiting fetal anomalies, would replace the current ban on most abortions after 20 weeks. Democrats vehemently opposed the new abortion law and voted against the revised bill last week. The World Council of Churches is decrying grave human rights violations in the Philippines. An international delegation of church leaders issued a statement pointing out the dire situation of the people in the Southeast Asian country. It said that the family members of the thousands killed under the previous Rodrigo Duterte government are still working for justice and accountability, but have few legal options. They have also urged the current administration to uphold human rights and to ensure that impartial investigations are carried out to hold perpetrators accountable. The statement also recognised the efforts of the National Council of Churches in the Philippines, ecumenical partners of the World Council of Churches and other faith-based organisations for their courageous work with and for the poor in the face of violent opposition. Pro-life groups have urged the federal government to examine the increased rate of abortions in Germany. There were around 104,000 abortions performed in Germany last year, which is a 10% increase from the previous year. Susanna Wenzel, the chairperson of the Christian Democrats for Life, stated that the government must fulfil its obligation to protect unborn children when abortion is deleted from the criminal code. She said a responsible government would investigate why the number of abortions is increasing. Wenzel called on the federal government to strengthen families and support women more so that life with children is enriching and does not become a financial risk. A decade-long United Nations peacekeeping mission in Mali is set to end on the 30th of June. That's ahead of a Security Council vote on a draft resolution that will give the 13,000-strong operation six months to withdraw. The mission's anticipated termination comes after years of hostilities between the UN and Mali's military regime, which reached breaking point this month when Abdoulaye Diop, who is the country's foreign minister, demanded that the forces depart without delay. The mission has been hindered by government regulations ever since Mali parted with Russia's Wagner mercenary force in 2021. 
the UN mission had been crucial in defending people from an Islamist insurgency that has claimed thousands of lives. Some experts fear the security situation could worsen when the mission departs, leaving Mali's under-equipped army alone with about 1,000 Wagner fighters to combat militants who control swathes of territory in the desert north and centre of the country. Volunteers of World Youth Day in Lisbon will travel to 600 institutions in order to bring the message of World Youth Day to many people who will not be able to participate in the international event. The Missionary Gesture Initiative will see volunteers visiting nursing homes, drug treatment facilities, hospitals, jails and facilities for persons with disabilities. Meanwhile, pilgrims from two parishes in the Archdiocese of Barcelona in Spain are walking more than 1,200 kilometres over 40 days to reach Lisbon to attend the event. The Archdiocese of Barcelona said the young people will immerse themselves in prayer, formation, renunciation and community life, strengthening their faith and preparing for a transformative encounter with Pope Francis. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.